In this video, I'm going to show you how to use modifiers on your character sheet to help expedite uh, various skills like Guidance, Bless, Sneak Attack, Divine Smite, and all those things. Um, a lot of times people, when they play Roll20, they just, you know, they come into the game and they, let's say they want to do a Spear Attack, they roll it. And then they realize, oh, I have sneak attack in this, so I'm going to manually roll another 2d6 or whatever your sneak attack is going to be. And you could do that, but it does take a lot of time. And sometimes it's better to just have it automated so that you don't forget your sneak attack and it doesn't take much time at all to get it right. So I'm going to go into my game and like always, I'm going to first turn off talk to myself that way I'm not bothering anyone else that may jump into the game so let's say I have a rogue here this is a monk but let's say I have a rogue first thing I want to do I'm gonna head over to my character sheet and I'm gonna hit the little gear icon here to get into my settings I want to turn on all of these modifier fields I'm just going to turn them all on because we might need to use them. And if we don't need to use them, you can turn them off. But I want to show you what each one does. So now that they're all on, uh, first, I'm going to show you the global save modifier. So you will see under saving throws, this global save modifier thing. And it'll automatically add in bless for you. And what this does is if you tick the box next to bless and I roll a deck save, of course I rolled a one, it will roll bless in addition to your other roll. So all you have to do is add these two together. I have an 11 on my deck save and that's it. I don't have to individually roll slash R 1D4 to roll my bless. I also don't have to forget that I have bless right when your party member casts bless on you you just turn on your character sheet open it tick this box and then you can forget about it and you'll have bless all the time for all your rules of course bless is also an attack modifier so you can have in the global attack modifier area 1d4 bless take that as well next time I attack I get a plus 1d4 to my attack roll and it's already factored in so that is the easiest way to keep track of bless and guidance and if I click the gear icon next to bless you can customize it a little bit so let's say it's not a d4 let's say you want to add a d8 because you have bardic inspiration then all you have to do is change it to 1d8 and then call it bardic inspiration that's it you can add new ones like this so bardic inspiration say 1d8 and there you go anytime I get bardic inspiration from my bard party member I can just go ahead and tick that if I want to use it or if I don't want to tick it let's say I forgot to tick bless when I rolled my attack I can I roll my shield strike there and then I remember, oh, I forgot to add bless. I'm going to, oh, hold on. I forgot the four there. Yeah. I want to roll bless. I can actually just click this and it'll roll 1d4 bless. So even if you forgot to tick the box, you can just click this and it'll roll bless for you. So definitely use these modifiers because they are really handy and they can be static modifiers too. They don't have to be rolls. So if I died and I have a death curse on me, which is a minus four penalty, then I just tick this box and any time I roll anything, it automatically shows minus four there. So I know I have the death curse and I don't have to forget that I have the death curse. If you are a rogue or an artificer or any other class that has damage bonuses, 
to your attacks. Um, Zealot Barbarians as another example. The most common thing is the sneak attack. So if I turn on a global damage modifier, they already have a sneak attack template for us. So if I type in sneak attack, let's say I have a 1d6 sneak attack. It's a piercing damage or whatever. If I tick that box and then I roll my spear, I have sneak attack. It automatically factors in one. Actually, yeah, you should write sneak here. So you can see that it is your sneak attack. And there you go. Now you don't have to forget your sneak attack and you don't have to have your party members tell you, hey, maybe you should roll your sneak attack. It's, it's just rolled automatically. Um, so for simple things like sneak attack, like arcane firearm, you can just check the box and use it if you want. But there are more complicated ways to do this if you don't want to tick a box every time. I think this is the simplest way and this is the way I like to use it. But um, if I jump over to uh, Skull and Shackles here with Analura, she has Arcane Firearm and I want and she does use Arcane Firearm the same way I use Sneak Attack. So you can see global damage modifier. I just tick it whenever I need to. Um, there is another way to do it. If you op if I open up this light crossbow macro here, I have a thing here under damage two, which asks a query. It displays a drop down box for me, and if I click light crossbow after I type talk to myself. If I click this, it asks me if I'm using arcane weapon and I can just say yes or no. If I say no, it just displays the crossbow attack. Oops, let's go ahead and take that off. It displays the crossbow attack without any bonuses or anything. Right. Um, Arcane Weapon was a Unearthed Arcana thing that Artificers had. And I just never removed it from this crossbow because I actually never use a crossbow in the game. But um, let's say I am using Arcane Weapon. I have it cast on my weapon. I'm concentrating on it. I just choose yes. And you can see... Hold on, you have to tick this box here. There you go. You can see, in addition to the regular damage, it also displayed my arcane weapon damage as well and rolled it for you. So these macros I'm going to put in the video description because it's hard to see what it is. But um, it's a very simple macro that you put in your damage two box and it just you just have to answer yes or no and it'll do the same thing i like to use the ticky box thing because it's easier to deal with and i don't have to answer a yes or no question each time i push the button um that's but this is an option for you if you'd like that now there's one thing that i will use a complicated macro for and I'm going to show you by going hopping over here to this character. This is Aran, and he is a paladin, which means he has smites. So paladin smites are a little more complicated because they scale depending on what spell slot you use and what kind of enemies you are fighting. If you're fighting an undead or fiend, it will do more damage. So I have actually created a macro based on other macros that I've found on Google to basically give me divine smite prompts. So what I do is I roll my regular attack 
and because Divine Smite has a has an option where you can choose to smite after you roll the attack. So you you know if you're critting or not. So let's say this hit, and I want to Divine Smite this. I click my little button here, which is my built-in macro, and it'll ask me, what spell slot am I using to smite? I'm going to use a fourth level smite here. So I submit that, and then it'll ask me, is it undead or fiend? Probably, yes, let's say it is, is a fiend. Did I get a crit? I did not get a crit, but let's say I did. It rolled 12d8 for me. So what it did is it factored in all of the extra dice that I would have gotten at a level 4 spell slot. It's a complicated macro that I will put in the description and you could literally just copy and paste it and use it. That is probably the best way to do smite because unfortunately there are just so many different ways to scale divine smite that it's, it's too hard to use with just modifiers in my opinion.